I had an interesting question recently. Someone asked how to create a cloud application programming model action that uses a HANA database procedure as the source of that action. And um, I built a little example for to answer that question, but I thought it might be interesting to share that with everybody else and, and walk through the process of, of how I created that, uh, that little example. Because uh, this is a, a powerful technique, but uh, probably one that uh, unless you're kind of far along in your journey on with the cloud application programming model, maybe you haven't tried or, or figured out how to do yourself yet. So we'll start completely from scratch, um, just like I did when I was uh, building this the other day. And let's create a new cloud application programming model project. Uh, so we're going to do a, uh, I want to do a CDS init, but I want to make sure I get the commands all right here. Yeah, so we'll do a CDS init. And I want to name this, I don't know, uh, proc example. And we want to add, we want HANA MTA pipeline. All right. And it created this in a folder called proc exec. exec. And now we can just go ahead and open up that as our workspace. And we'll see the project that was created for us. Nothing much in here yet. We got the core project structure in our, um, you know, like with our package JSON and everything. That all looks good. Uh, but what we want now is let's do a little basic modeling to get us started. We're going to need, um, let's just start here first in our DB folder. Let's create a new file, data model.cds. And super basic to start off. We'll borrow from the book's sample implementation uh, just to keep things very simple. And what we want to do now is, yeah, I want to create an HDI container. We're going to go ahead and build this and everything, but first let's, uh, let's come here to the root. Um, well, let's do a, let's just go ahead and do a CDS build. There we are. And what I'm going to do, I like to do my database container manually. That gives me a little bit more control. You could use the CDS deploy too as well. Uh, but I'm going to start here with just a uh, CF create service. And I don't know what I'm going to call this. Uh, procedure example. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's do a CF services. Let's look at one of them that I already have out there. I can never, I can never remember the uh, the service and the plan names. I always want to swap them there. Sorry about that. CF create service, and now we'll try that procedure example, and it is a uh, and I got the order wrong here. Hana HDI shared, and then procedure example. is in progress and we can wait a second while that creates there we are all created and now we need to create our service key it's service key for procedure ex and name it default Service key is created, and now we can use Honda CLI. Um, remember my own, yeah, Honda CLI 
service key or procedure x and default and yes this is uh, on a cloud please do validate the certificate and yes we're on the cloud foundry runtime and this is creating our default env json and we're connected to that container all good so now what we can do we can go ahead and do our CDS build and that deployed into our gen folder Let that not pick up my DB. oh I know why we need to make a couple changes to the package JSON real quick here that's okay while we're in here let's also update the on a client version and we're actually going to need I'm going to go ahead and add in a couple other dependencies that we're going to need later uh, we're going to add the HANA deployer and the HDB EXT and the promisefied wrapper around that we're going to need that as I said just a little bit later and just need to adjust our CDS section instead of requires SQL requires HANA and we want to deploy to HTTP table because we are on on a cloud and while I'm in here this is a little trick that I've picked up recently so I don't have to adjust the targets and I can go to the default um, uh, gen folder but I like to be able to deploy to HANA from the root folder and only have one copy of the HDI deployer. So I'll install the HDI deployer into the root and then I'll add an NPN script that allows me to call the HDI deployer from the root but deploy from the gen DB folder. Uh, we'll see that in a second. It works really, really nice. So now from the root folder. Let's just go ahead and do an npn install to pick up all those dependencies. There we go. And now if I do uh, CDS build again from the root. Now it created my DB folder, no, gen DB, uh, with the bookshop artifact. And if I go ahead and do an npn run HANA, that will deploy it into the HANA database. There we are, it created the books table in our database. HANA CLI tables. There we are, we see my bookshop books has been created in the HANA database. So within just a few seconds here, we've created our uh, cloud application programming model application. We've added um, a small database model to it and uh, we built the whole thing and deployed it into the database, quite simple. Now we're ready to start uh, adding the artifacts specific to this example in that we wanna add an action and a stored procedure and see how to hook those two things up together. We actually don't need to work anymore at the cap uh, DB level. We have our base data model uh, with our single entity. What we wanna do now is we wanna go into the rest of our SRC folder and this is where we're gonna add some artifacts that we're going to need. So we're gonna add a new file here. We wanna create a synonym and this is just so we can use the dummy object so even that is outside of our container so we need a synonym for it we don't need any special grantors or security to be able to access it though we just have to create the synonym and I want to go ahead and create a stored procedure and new record HDB procedure and go ahead and that 
in. Get a little bit of syntax highlighting. That'll help a bit. There we are. We've got our store procedure. I don't know if our HDI config. It's probably okay. We'll give it a try. So now, what should happen when I go back? Yeah, stay in the in the root, and if I do a CDS build now, what you'll see is it also copied over my dummy and my uh, HDB procedure to the GenDB folder as well. So we can keep our other folders as as uh, pure source folders and let everything copy into the gen folder and then within there we have the db and the srv but that's where things actually execute or deploy out of and what we can see here is if i do the npn run hana again that will deploy that into the database to new files and now if i do a hana cli procedures to look at what's in the database, yes, I do have a new stored procedure called new record in the database. So I've now deployed my stored procedure into the database. All right, next we're going to need to define the action itself. And to do that, we're going to go to the uh, SRV. Yeah, create uh, a CDS definition at this level cat service dot cds let's see what we have here not a whole lot that basically we want to serve our entity and we want to add an action called add random book returns an array of books uh, so we'll be able to see what was added by the call to the stored procedure Go ahead and save that. And if we do a, if I was to do a CDS build, it would build that out. And npn run hana. It adds views into the database. And we could go ahead and do a CDS serve. Open that. And we'd see our books. And we could even test, we'll go ahead and test uh, our service call. Now it's an action that updates data. So it's not a get operation. That's why we can't test it uh, simply from the, from the web browser like we did uh, looking at our books. But what we can do here is we can just go ahead and create a uh, HTTP client test in the business application studio. So just create another folder here called test. Oh, well, it would help if I could spell. Uh, not that it has to be named exactly test, but it would drive me crazy if I had that typo in there. And let's create a file test.http. And. I wonder if that works without changing the URL. I haven't tried that. I, I did this test originally locally on my on my local machine. Um, I wonder what happens. That is still running. Yeah, it does work, uh, but parameter data uh, must not be undefined because there is no implementation for this. Uh, for this action. And that's the next part that we want to add here. We can add an implementation for our action simply by creating a JavaScript file with the same name, service.js. That's going to connect up automatically. It's going to be like an exit handler for our OD, uh, for our uh, Cloud Application Programming Model Service. And we can go ahead and put the code in here. And what we're saying is um, we're connecting to the database. We're able to say this on 
and this is the name of the action add random book and then this is the logic that will be executed when this action is called now within here we want to call a stored procedure so we're dropping down into uh, not sort of the abstracted CDL syntax of the cloud application programming model but instead we're, we're dropping into uh, really HANA HANA specific processing at this point but what we can do is the uh, database connection that that the cloud application pro programming model gives us when we do a connect to well it has the options to connect to the database so what we're able to do is use the HDB EXT module pass it those credentials that were maintained and, and handed off to us by the uh, by the cloud application programming model and then we're able to go ahead and, and load the stored procedure call the stored procedure and then uh, we're able to return the results and the cloud application programming model will take that results and map it right back into because we said returns an array of books we will map that back into the books entity and that's what we'll, it will return automatically for us in the response so quite quite easy we don't have to worry about you know really mess, messing around with request response formatting the output or anything like that cloud application programming model is going to take care of that for us we can focus on just calling our stored procedure in this case and it's going to connect up to our service pretty pretty automatically so uh, I don't think I need to do the CDS build again uh, I will just to well yeah because I wanted to pick up my cat service JS and make sure that it copies it to uh, gen uh, SRV and uh, so now I can, uh, I don't think, I'll, I'll do it just in case. NPN run HANA. I don't think there's anything for it to pick up new. Nope. And now I can do a CDS serve again. Don't see much difference at this level. But now if I rerun my test, Now we can see that it was successful, that it returned the entity that was generated by the uh, by the stored procedure, and all that stored procedure is doing is basically we went back there we didn't really look at it in detail, uh, but we're just generating some random numbers uh, just as a little test to, to be able to verify that it does what it should do, but it does also insert them into the database table that our entity sits under. Uh, but then it returns it uh, in the body because we did a return output results. That's how it's coming back in the uh, in the OData response of the action. We also we also did a console log so we can see it here in the log. But just to prove to you that yes, that really did work. Now when we come over here to the books and we look at it, now we see that that one record. And we could do this uh, we could do this multiple times here. We could uh, go ahead and send it again. Again, each time we're sending it, it's generating a new record. Oh, what did I get there? <laughs> Already exists. So, so I've got a, I, uh, somehow even with the random generation of, of some of the values, it must not be random enough because I, I got a key that already existed. Well, that's, that's fine. Uh, we, uh, we served our purpose to get uh, a few records in the database. And now if I refresh, there you go. You see the... Uh, the multiple records that that we inserted there so not the the most complex example but in pretty quick time we created a whole new application deployed it in the hana database did some hana database native artifacts in the form of a stored procedure created an action in our service and connected up that action to the stored procedure so something that appeared very complex on the surface, this merging of sort of the two wor worlds of HANA native development and, and the more abstracted cloud application programming model, turns out that it's actually very simple to, to bring the two together. And I hope this video has is, is helped demonstrate that to you.